Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 2nd. First up, this is from Forbes Business. Will the F-35 be the last manned fighter jet? Physics, physiology, and the fiscal facts suggest yet. Earlier this month, Navy Secretary Ray Mabus remarked that the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter should be and almost certainly will be the last manned strike fighter spacecraft the Department of Navy will ever buy. It has sparked a bit of discussion both inside and outside the military, but the advantages, vulnerabilities, and ethical concerns of armed, remotely piloted aircraft, I think Secretary Mabus is likely to be proven correct in his prediction because physics, physiology, and fiscal facts are on his side. I kind of agree with that, too, if not the F-35. There may be one more at the most, but you got to realize the limitations of a fighter craft. It's not like the old days of World War One, where you do dogfights and stuff like that. I mean, basically, it's fire a missile from so far away, you don't even see who your opponent is. And the limitations of jets right now is what the pilot can tolerate, as far as uh, you know, physical fatigue, as far as being able to take G forces, things like that. And if you take the pilot out of the craft and set him in a remote controlled room, as long as you give him a good view, you know, a 3D view of the surrounding area, you can swap out pilots midstream. I mean, it's basically just a matter of re- all you have to do is refuel it. And, you know, every few hours just uh, refuel the jet, but there's no uh, pilot getting tired or anything like that. It's just until the space, uh, the, until the jet actually needs maintenance or something like that is about all you're talking about. So I think it's very likely that uh, in the future my grandkids and great-grandkids, they uh, – won't really see people uh, doing the fighter jets. But in case anybody's confused, we're just talking specifically fighter jets here. I don't think there's going to be uh, still anybody getting rid of all the entire pilot program, too. You're going to have pilots flying all other kinds of aircraft and helicopters and things like that, too. So uh, we're just talking specifically about one type of airplane that the Navy has, and probably in the same case of the Army and the Air Force like that. But you're always going to need... Uh, human pilots in flying craft for various reasons and cargo craft and stuff like that. So it's it's not totally the end of pilots in the military. This next one was sent in by three different people. This was uh, sent in by Triumph Ant, by Catherine S., and also Michael R. Thank you for uh, sending this one in. Should, should you get a Tesla home battery? Let's physics explain. Tesla announced a battery for your house, the Powerwall. I think this is a great opportunity to talk about batteries and physics. Let us let me answer some questions you might have. And then he goes on to talk about that um, even necessarily if you don't think about installing solar panels or wind turbines to recharge this battery, what some people may find it useful for is if you have a meter that has uh, hourly, where it takes, takes uh, into account the hourly charges. It's a uh, I forget what they call it, but it's a meter that actually switches over to different rates depending on night. I know in some areas if you uh, do your laundry late at night, they give you a break because the cost of generating electricity in the evening is quite a bit cheaper than generating electricity during the day. So what they were thinking is some people might actually see benefits from this battery by uh, charging it up at night and then using electricity from the battery during the day instead of the more expensive daytime power produced. Now, I don't have one of those kind of meters. My Our meters in this area, as far as I know, in the Chicagoland area, they're just typical dumb meters, so they charge you the same uh, going rate no matter what the time of the day is. But uh, if you do have a, it's a differential meter, that's what it's called. If you have a differential meter, um, these things could possibly pay for itself. But the other thing is you have to be paying a certain amount for electricity to be worth it. And my average electric bill is running about $100 a month, so even if it saved me 50% of my electricity, that would be $50 a month, but that takes a long time to pay for a $3,500 battery pack, which is about what these run, and then you can get even bigger ones if you want. But um, I would say even for the smaller one, the payback is just too long. I mean, you're talking probably seven seven years or more before it actually pays for itself, and then I start getting money ahead. And I don't know what the lifespan is. They may only last 10 years anyway, so I'm not really sure if it's ready for me, but it may be ready for certain people. This next one is from CNN. Wayward Russian spacecraft expected to re-enter atmosphere. The last supply ship they sent up recently, it's a Russian uh, robotic spacecraft to resupply the space station with a a few tons of equipment and uh, resupplies and food and stuff like that. Didn't quite make it for some reason when it uh, separated the third stage and uh, was getting ready to do some tests on the propulsion system. It failed, so um, 
they tried to get they got some contact with it, but they weren't able to get enough contact to be able to to guide it into place and bring it back up to the uh, International Space Station to do its job properly. So basically, sometime they said between May fifth and May seventh, it's going to splash down, or well, well, won't really so much splash down. I, they're hoping that it'll all burn up before it actually hits anything. But I'm hoping if there is anything left, it will be into the ocean. That they do have at least maybe enough control of it to to guide it into a safe place way out in the middle of the ocean or something like that. Uh, they said uh, no huge loss as far as you know putting anybody in danger because everything in the uh, supply ship is replaceable. So I guess they do make uh, preparations for this just in case it should happen. So I guess uh, duplicates of everything is standing by to go up to the next one, which is going to be sometime in June. They're going to send another resupply ship up to the International Space Station. This is uh, one from Space.com that I found that... Uh, Everybody's talking about the messenger probe that crashed into Mercury just a few days ago, but uh, nobody's giving pictures of it except for I did find one picture on space.com. As usual, links to all the stories will be down below. But if you scroll down to the middle part of this article, you will see the picture, the very last picture the NASA probe messenger takes before it crashes into Mercury, and they believe it created something like a 50 foot or wider crater. Farewell, it's called Farewell Messenger. NASA probe crashes into Mercury. And uh, I'll stick a, a version of the picture up here for you to see, but if you want to see the, the better resolution one, go to the uh, article itself and read it and then click on the photograph to the right. But um, a very nice long mission. I mean, it's been up there for a long, long time since, what, March of 2011? And basically they had to do something with it because when it runs out of fuel to be able to reorient the orbit, it's going to go into a unstable orbit anyway, so why not at least, you know, get some scientific uh, use out of it. Um, didn't hear anything else about if they got any uh, more pictures of the actual crash itself taking place. I don't know if that is, if, if I find anything by that or if anybody knows uh, that they got anything like that. Uh, please send me a link and let me know. And this last one was sent by 1954 Shadow. If you're kind of geeky about satellites and wanting to keep track of them, there's a place called Satflare, and I actually used it to uh, track one of the GPS satellites, Navstar 73, where you can pretty much plug into the search engine anything that's orbiting uh, International Space Station, the uh, uh, pretty much any satellite that exists and is still in orbit you can put on this. And if you scroll down towards the, uh, uh, past, just past the pictures, you'll see a little place in the center where it says set your location. So it'll actually tell you when satellites are flying over your location. And uh, you can also see your International Space Station when it's going to come into view that you might possibly be able to uh, see it. But uh, this gives you a lot more information than your average satellite tracking application. So I would recommend if you're kind of a geek and into satellite tracking, try SatFlare. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.